The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning, Kern County. It is 5 a.m. on this Thursday morning. I'm Alex Fisher, and we're talking about your heat, of course, because it is going to be a hot day and it's going to be a hot weekend as well. And Kevin Shred joins us. Yeah, you're exactly right, Alex. Uh, we are on a weather alert and you can see behind me there is a statewide flex alert in place from 5 to 10 p.m. That means that's where we expect the highest of the energy to be used. Uh, and so we'll have to watch the grid carefully. Let's talk about those watches and warnings and we definitely have the uh, excessive heat warning in place. We've been talking about it. It is in place until Saturday at 8 p.m. And uh, outside right now we're sitting at 78 degrees with a light wind out of the east southeast at five. Now I know a lot of us uh, want to get out and maybe do that morning run. I would uh, say do it now because as you can see throughout the day by 9 a.m. we start to slip here and throughout the afternoon late morning and throughout the afternoon and evening temperatures are just going to be way too hot. Also want to touch on our dog walk forecast uh, head out this morning 8 a.m. 82 degrees and then I uh, don't uh, suggest any walking of the dogs throughout late morning and into the afternoon. As you can see those temperatures are going to really warm up by 5 o'clock 106. That of Tehachapi. Sun coming up right now. We've got a temperature of 59 under a calm wind and you can see our hour by hour. It's going to be a hot one for you as well with temperatures nearing 100. We'll talk more about this coming up in just a little bit. For now, back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. And for the second time in a matter of days, a man is in the hospital this morning after being shot by Bakersfield police officers. According to police, officers trying to pull over that white Lexus in the area of Olive and Newton drives just after 9 p.m. The driver did not stop, but the pursuit was quickly called off because of dangerously high speeds. Police say a sheriff's helicopter followed the car and officers were able to pick up the chase sometime later. Spike strips were used on the car in the area of Union Avenue and Lois Lane around 9.45 p.m. And that's when police say the suspect left his car and attempted to steal the car off an innocent bystander. It's still unclear what happened next, but officers opened fire on the man. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening wounds. Police say a gun belonging to the suspect was recovered at the scene, and the car he was driving was stolen out of Bakersfield. No one was hurt. The investigation is ongoing. And now to a heated Bakersfield City Council meeting. Things getting so impassioned, the mayor order the chambers cleared. All of this surrounding the city's proposed budget for the upcoming fiscal year. 17's Aton Wallace was at the meeting and has a recap this morning. This budget is more than $600 million and at Wednesday evening's city council meeting, much of the attention was focused on the portion of this budget that's allocated for the Bakersfield Police Department. <laughs> Passions running high Wednesday inside the Bakersfield City Council Chambers. Say something. All of this surrounding the city's proposed $683.2 million budget for the coming fiscal year, and specifically the $133.4 million of that allocated for the Bakersfield Police Department. The budget funds 28 new sworn officers and 17 department civilian employees. At the council meeting, more than two dozen people voiced opposition. If police was the solution to crime, if police was the solution to public safety, there wouldn't be crime anymore. Police have been around for a long time. So when we ask you to redirect funding, when we ask you to defund the police, what we're really saying is dare to see a world where black and brown people are treated fairly and equitably. That is it. About an hour into the meeting, some in attendance who were not at the podium spoke out, calling on council members to defund the police. This was the moment city attorney Jeannie Gennaro, citing the Brown Act, called on the council to end the rest of the public speaking time for that item if more people spoke out of turn. So one more disruption and warning from the mayor. I would suggest to the mayor that public speaking on this topic is over. Thank you. Right after that, when one of the attendees spoke back to the city attorney, this happened. It's over. There's no more public speaking. Next speaker, please. In the end, the entire chamber was cleared, with Mayor Karen Go calling for temporary recess. Rules were then put in place to allow one person to enter at a time to speak before the council. 
You've had your warnings. For those of you who do not clear the chambers, I will ask the police to escort you out. Once things settled, speakers returned to the podium. Eight of the speakers at the meeting coming out in support of the budget. Defund the police? What a foolish thought. Here's a suggestion. Back the blue. Keeping everyone safe is a matter of public safety. We don't support defunding the police. The final vote, unanimous support. Motion is approved. Also discussed at the meeting, the future of the historic Southern Pacific train depot in Old Town Kern. The council voting six to nothing for the city to lease the depot property for the next year to make improvements to it. That will cost the city $127,000, but council members, including second ward councilman Andre Gonzalez, said they hope the investment will ultimately save the historic site, preventing it from getting demolished. In studio, Aton Wallace, 17 News. In California City, an emergency meeting was held last night to address a computer infection that has crippled the city. California City's computer system has been down since late May following a ransomware attack. Yesterday afternoon, Mayor Jeannie O'Laughlin confirmed the computer system is compromised and is unrepairable. During last night's emergency session, council members voted to switch over to Microsoft 365, which is more secure and will allow emails from the current system to be transferred over. The process is expected to take up to 10 days. And new this morning, Bakersfield Police says the officers made zero arrests during a late night DOI checkpoint. The checkpoint happened between the hours of 6 p.m. and 11.45 on Mount Vernon Avenue near Heritage Park. Police say more than 1,100 cars were screened. 55 drivers were cited for not having an active license, while 45 cars were impounded. No one was arrested. In education news this morning, with local high schools making changes to their administrative staffs, the Kern High School District announced yesterday Roger Sanchez, Director of Research and Planning, will take over as Ridgeview High School's new principal, following the decision by the school's current principal, Steve Holmes, to retire. In addition, Carla Stallworth, Director of Educational Services, has been appointed principal of East High. East High's outgoing principal, Leo Holland, has been appointed as Assistant Superintendent of Instruction, replacing Brenda Lewis, who is also retiring. Looking ahead to this weekend, Blessing Corner Ministries has spent years helping out the most vulnerable in our community, and now they need your help to stay in business. Blessing Corner says they're hoping to raise $75,000 to stay at their Union Avenue location. They're hosting a barbecue fundraiser tomorrow at the corner of Union and First Street from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. A $30 meal gets you either two ribs, a hot link, and two side dishes, or rib tips and two side dishes. A $50 order gets you four ribs, two hot links, and two side dishes. All orders come with a corn muffin and a soft drink. They're accepting pre-orders right now. We have more information on our website, kget.com. And Blessing Corner Ministries is also helping out local dads this weekend. The church is hosting a Father's Day giveaway, where they will hand out food baskets and gifts to all dads who show up. Now, this is video of a similar giveaway for Mother's Day back in May. The Father's Day giveaway is Sunday from 2.30 till 4.30 at the church on Union Avenue. Clinica Sierra Vista is now offering rapid COVID-19 testing and COVID-19 vaccinations. Call 833-278-4584 to make your appointment. But don't delay. Clinica Sierra Vista, putting patients first. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back. Your time now is 525, and the rate of homes being flipped is taking a dip. Adam Data Solutions released its first quarter 2021 U.S. home flipping report this morning, and it shows the number of homes flipped dropped to the lowest level since 2000. As the flipping rate dropped, both profits and profit margins also declined. The housing market has been red hot with limited inventory and low interest rates, but investors may be worried that home prices have simply gone too high, dampening their rate of return. In your 17 Health Watch this morning, a Florida toddler is hospitalized after swallowing 16 magnetic balls. After extensive surgery, the magnets were taken out, but he continues to have complications. His mother now has an important message for other parents. Megan Milando has more. 
Hannah Arrington is a mom of five. She says sometime in April, one of her older kids brought tiny magnetic balls home from school. Shortly after, her youngest son, Conan, started having stomach pain that eventually sent him to the ER. From the time he got them from whoever he got them from, um, Conan ended up swallowing 16 of them, and we had no idea. As he ate them, they went down into his digestive tract, and then each time he would like find another one somewhere in the house and swallow it, it would click together and it perforate a hole through, you know, his stomach all the way down into his colon area. After an extensive surgery, the magnets are out, but Conan is back in the hospital on a feeding tube as doctors run tests to figure out why he can't keep anything down. His mom's message to the public, double, even triple check what your kids bring home. Me and my husband never thought that like, we would have to pretty much pat our kids down when they come home from school and like, yeah, you check your kid's backpack, you know, and you ask how their day is, but how often do you go through their pant pockets, their shirt pockets, you know, it makes you feel like you feel your kid. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.